The resting membrane potential refers to the fact that cells are more positive on the outside compared to the inside. And this is right across the membrane. So at rest, neurons are about minus 70. All cells are negative inside compared to outside. And you'll see some variation. Neurons are typically about minus 70. So overall, throughout your body, there's an equal number of positive and negative charged particles, ions, anions, et cetera. Um, sodium chloride, for example, Na plus Cl minus. But there's a difference in the charge just right across the membrane. This unequal concentration of charged particles. This resting membrane potential, or VM, is the basis of this electrical potential, a separation of charge that allows for excitability of, of neurons. So let's talk about this. This was first discovered in the squid giant axon. Squids have, what did I just do? Squids have um, a very large axon that has been used to measure, you can actually impale it. So if we draw a neuron here, what researchers did was impale this large axon with an electrode and then have a reference electrode, which is outside of the cell. So this would be in the ICF versus the ECF. And so they're looking at the difference in charge. And the outside is always set to zero. And then what they did is look at, okay, is the inside of the cell more negative or more positive compared to the outside of the cell? Doesn't matter how many literal ions are there with the, we're not measuring concentration of ions. We're looking at relative charge. And that's where they found it was about minus 70 inside the cell compared to outside of the cell. 70 millivolts more negative. Millivolts is your measurement of electricity based on ion concentration. Ions are charged particles, positive or negative. So negative ions contribute to negative um, millivolts. Positive ions contribute to positive millivolts. So just cut here as well, if you want to, for your reference, a diagram of this um, that's done by someone else. This is the same thing I just showed you. Um, this term here, potentiometer, is the measurer, the voltometer that measures volts across the membrane. So how does this negative charge come about? It's due to a difference in concentration of charged molecules. Um, so I'm going to draw a picture here. Actually, I'd like you to pause and draw a picture of a cell with your relative amounts of potassium, sodium, chloride, and calcium inside and outside of the cell. These two we should be able to do for sure. And then what's the charge difference? I draw my cell just as a big circle like this. The same principles apply to all cells, although we'll be looking at it mostly at a neuron. High potassium inside the cell, low potassium outside the cell. High sodium outside the cell, low sodium in. High chloride outside the cell, low chloride in. The one I'm missing here is high calcium outside the cell, low calcium in. All of these are contributing to the charge difference. Um, however, some will be more important for contributing to that. I do want you to know all of these because they're all gonna come up at some point. So these two, chloride and calcium, will be important once we get to neurotransmitter release and neurotransmitter signaling. So might as well learn them now. However, I mostly, we'll be talking about these two right now. The other thing here is these negatively charged proteins. So there's a bunch of negatively, negatively charged stuff inside your cell that cannot leave, right? Your cytoplasm is a soup of lots of proteins, all those organelles, RNA. Most of that overall is negatively charged and that is gonna be important as well for establishing this charge difference. If you write, wrote this charge difference, it was about minus 70, inside the cell. Now I have calcium there twice, so I am going to erase this one. Have it right there. 
So now what I'd like you to do is add on the proteins. So add to your picture and the direction that these proteins move ions, add on potassium and sodium leak channels and the sodium potassium pump. So let me get these out of the way here. Okay, if we put in leak channels, potassium and sodium will both move down their electrical gra chemical gradients. So for potassium, this is out. For sodium, this is in, based on just concentration gradients, let's just say. Okay, this was a leak channel I just drew here. Let's add in the sodium potassium pump. This is a pump. It's moving these ions against their concentration gradient. So sodium is being pumped out, potassium is being pumped in, using ATP to create the concentration gradients that exist for these ions. So this is one very important protein in establishing the negative resting membrane potential. However, this is the other one, the potassium leak channel. Let's look at that on a different diagram. This diagram is showing the various proteins along the membrane. And I wanna highlight for you the two that are most important for establishing the resting membrane potential. One is the sodium potassium exchange pump, right? Using ATP to pump sodium out and potassium in, establishing that concentration gradient. Once you establish that concentration gradient, you've got high potassium inside the cell. It's just that high potassium outside the cell. So if you throw in a bunch of potassium leak channels, where's potassium gonna go? It's gonna flow out and these large proteins the other, the negatively charged particles inside the cell cannot follow potassium. There's a drive for them to, because when potassium, a positive ion flows out, the negative ions want to follow, but they can't because they're proteins and RNA. They cannot go through the membrane. The membrane is not permeable to them. So potassium flows out, leaving negative behind. That's what makes the resting membrane potential be negative. Sodium potassium pump using ATP to maintain high potassium in, creating the concentration gradient um, that both creates high potassium in as well as high sodium out, which will be important as well. And then the leak channels, ions, constant movement, leak, right, of ions down their electrical chemical gradients. Potassium leak channels are most prevalent. They are more common, there's more of them than there are sodium leak channels. So this constant movement of potassium out contributes to the negative resting membrane potential.